Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Bell, a podcast from the Barrow County School System. I'm your host, Sierra Roberts. Today, we are going to talk about our upcoming Performing Arts Center and looking at all the possibilities it will unlock for our students. Today, we have special guests, Lee Bain. Hi, Sierra. Kendall Dutton. Hello. And Jacob Boyle. Hi, Sierra. All right, so if you guys will tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Lee Bain. I'm the Director of Innovative Learning for the Barrow County School System. I'm Kendall Dutton. I work system operations and uh, oversee new construction and renovation projects for the school system. I'm Jacob Boyle. I'm a project manager with Charles Black Construction. We are the construction manager for the Performing Arts Center. Okay, Lee, will you tell us about how the Performing Arts Center went from an idea to a reality? Absolutely. Well back in around 2007 and 8, there was an idea of building a uh, shared performing arts facility between the county government, city government, and the Barrow County School System. And when the housing bubble burst, that idea um, got scaled back. And that's where we have the Innovation Amphitheater now, which is a great um, commodity, a great venue for us to have outdoor events. But we've lacked an indoor facility for so many years, there's not anywhere else. And so um, with the innovation campus here at Bassa and Sims and now Austin Road Elementary School. The space and the land is here so that we can build the Performing Arts Center and that's where Kendall and, and Jacob and the rest of the team come together and are putting this dream into reality. That's wonderful. Jacob, when the Performing Arts Center is done, what are some of the details of it? Um, good question. So it's about 750 seats in the shared auditorium space itself. The overall building is right under 39,000 square feet. Um, in addition to the shared auditorium space, there's other supporting spaces around it, including um, a dance classroom, a drama classroom, a band classroom with its supporting practice rooms, etc., and a chorus room as well. Um, just some nuts and bolts facts about it, so to say. It's about 2,000 cubic yards of concrete, um, over 70,000 block, over 60,000 brick. Um, there's theatrical lighting systems on motorized rigging. There is um, theatrical sound systems, as well as a live streaming and recording system in the auditorium space. So. That's amazing. That's something exciting for every student to look forward to. Uh, Kendall, how has the process been a collaborative effort between our fine arts departments, district construction planners, and the contractors. Well, ironically, it, it, it happened in this space. Uh, a committee was put together of teachers and administrators from multiple schools, um, and we just kind of worked through it and programmed. And but uh, we sat in this room and we started with one piece of paper and literally just started making notes on them. I said, well, I think move the bathroom over here or do this over there. And, and it just, it evolves. And part of the process, and you, and you mentioned the contractor and construction planners, and I think something that really should be emphasized. We, we start with our design team and our contractor early in the process. And part of it is the development of reviewing the plans and the budget periodically uh, at, at schematic and then 25%, 50, 75%, you know, 95%. So that process allows you to let it evolve and maintain the budget because at any point during that process, if, if the project exceeds the budget, you got to kind of like Monopoly, you got to go back, go back and start over and, and redefine the vision. Um, so it was, a, it was a great, experience because they were folks Lee, uh, I don't know all their names, but the folks from Winder, Fair High School, Appalachian, uh, administrators, and just kind of brainstorm. And that's how we got here. It's really nice that you all get to collaborate on that and, you know, really use this as a school system effort to come together and work on this project. We had an architect, I uh, had an architect one time tell me, you know, between designing to building code, designing toward life safety, designing toward DOE standards, the ability to really create gets you know bogged down because you you, you got to fit all these rules in. Uh, but you can still do that and meet the requirements, 
and have some innovative ideas. And uh, I think we've accomplished that. Absolutely. So when did this project begin? process it still began with us um, and I think it all started well before that but we were involved in the process back to last summer of 2023 that's when we began came on the team to start you know giving our feedback and experiences from other performing arts centers um, providing budget and constructability feedback and really working collaboratively with the school system and the design team and others involved from a construction standpoint but and then uh, we've actually just broken ground here in the last few months and getting in the concrete footings now and getting ready to start going vertical. Typically we say it takes three years from inception to occupying a building. And, and it, sometimes people don't realize all the work that happens before you start construction. And so that, that pre-construction process happens very early if you if you want to maintain that collaboration and budget control that we we're talking about. So uh, to answer your question specifically, if you say fall of 25 minus three years was fall of 22. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started the pre-construction process. Uh, and to me, that, that's, that is the most important part of the process because as Lee said, that's where the collaboration happens. Uh, more often than not, you know, architects sit, sit in an office or a cubicle and they, they design what they feel like we need and we don't have that collaboration. And then we, we put it out to bid and get something back. Yeah, I really wish we had done this and I really wish we had done that. And so that starting early and allowing that time for that collaboration is to me the, the most important thing that we do. So one of the next steps is that, that I've witnessed in this process, speaking of collaboration, is this has had the most end user in that teachers were part of the design and planning process. Um, Kendall mentioned at 25% and 50% of completion, um, we had teachers from numerous schools, numerous programs here looking at the plans going, I like this, I wish we had that, and then giving that information back to the designers to make those adjustments within all of the rules and regulations that Kendall mentioned. Absolutely. I definitely think it's important also for those teachers and the staff to have that opinion and what they need in their classrooms and the structure of it. So I think that's awesome. I never knew how important a kiln was <laughs> until I met Lee and, um, and pottery wheels, you know, but uh, yes, it's, it's very important. Uh, Jacob, I have a quick question for you. So how does it feel to be able to work with the school system to, you know, get this project going? Uh, I mean, it feels great, especially, um, as Kendall referred to, being involved early from that pre-construction process and get to meet everybody and hear how excited they were um, to have a space like this that, they, as Lee mentioned earlier, they've been needing for so long. So. Um, those are the projects that are most enjoyable is to see everybody so excited that way. Um, and we're, we're very fortunate and feel blessed to be involved in it. Well, Jacob, I, th I, think, it, I think it's also important to, to elaborate a little bit on that partnership that we've had for several years. I yeah. mean, this is not the first project you guys have done with us. No, so yeah, we've actually, um, we've had the same superintendent working on site down here every day since March of 2019. Um, specifically on this campus, we've been fortunate to have the opportunity to build VASA 1, um, Austin Road Elementary School, and then now VSC. So. Wow, that's yeah. wonderful. What, uh, was there other schools that you guys have also worked on? Yeah, so we're based in Cleveland in Northeast Georgia, and we operate within about a 75 mile radius of there. Um, so we work with all the surrounding school systems up there in Northeast Georgia. So. So Lee, how many Barrow County school system students or programs will be able to make use of the Performing Arts Center? Well, that's one of the great innovations in this design in that the system absolutely needs a shared auditorium performance space. And that's what Jacob mentioned earlier about this auditorium. But then within that build, the surrounding classrooms and areas won't be empty all day long waiting for an evening performance, but they'll be used as daily classroom instruction spaces for all the performing arts um, students in, in BASA. But this space here in the, re in the rehearsal areas, um, they're open to 
all Barrow County students. Um, every program from our elementary honor course to middle school jazz night to high school musicals, all of those things are, are, are going to be are going to live here. They're going to be housed here, and um, the design process that we mentioned earlier through the collaboration of of really having teachers come in and look at how can the space be used at a maximum capacity throughout the day, in the evening, on the weekends, so that the public can get in and see the awesome things that kids are able to do. But during the school day, we can use it as an instructional enhancement to the entire VASA campus and um, the innovation campus. I really like that. I like how you also mentioned that elementary schools will get to come perform here because it's, I feel like it's so important for our feeder schools to go ahead and get an idea of what they'll be coming into eventually. So I really like that you touched on that. Lee, another question I have is, uh, what would a typical week look like for the performances at the PAC? So yeah, during a typical week, <clears throat> during a typical week, there's a whole wide range of things that'll be happening. During the school day, you're going to see kids in, in band classrooms, you're going to see them in rehearsal rooms, chorus kids, you'll see um, students on stage just working out all the different art integration aspects that happen um, from the BASA program, that idea from the, the AIM program to the BASA, the Bear Arts and Sciences Academy of project-based, hands-on, arts-integrated learning. And then in the afternoons and the evenings, you're, you'll see rehearsals Monday through Wednesday, tech night Thursday and Friday, and then maybe opening night performances of, of elementary honor chorus or middle school jazz band or um, the high school musicals. It's going to be a live place. So Kendall, where are we now in the construction process and what do the next steps look like? Today we're in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining a lot. Um, but I think, uh, Jacob, what did uh, Brandon say? 380 yards of concrete uh, Correct. foundations in this week. Um, but what you'll see if you're looking out the window or you're looking at the drone picture, you'll start to see, I call it magic fairy dust, but it, it's gravel. You'll see gravel and then you'll see some blue plastic go down and then you'll see a concrete slab. And and then you'll see the structure still start uh, going vertical. And again, it goes back to that starting early. Um, Jacob, I don't know how many loads, but the structural steel is on the ground waiting to be erected and so are the other materials. And so part of that process is, is getting started early and getting those materials because we all have experienced those lead time issues uh, as of the last few years. But so short answer is you'll see a concrete slab and some structural steel going up. Do you guys kind of have an idea of when the last piece of steel will go on? Or is that kind of because of the rain and everything? Uh, no, we're projecting that the steel will be finished this summer um, and then we'll have a roof on shortly following that and then we can get out of the rain and have a dry place to work and not be impacted by the weather. So That would be good. Jacob, yes. how do you manage to an active construction site right in the middle of a campus of schools? Uh, great question. Um, really what that boils down to is good communication and having an understanding and a conversation with the staff that work on the campus every day so we can get familiar with what their operations look like, what the traffic patterns look like, so that we're being safe and minimizing any interruptions from the day-to-day -day stuff that happens on the campus. So um, that goes back to you know us having that same project team and experience and familiarity with Barrow County School System um, like I said, we've, we built the original bass out here. We built Austin Road Elementary School. So we have a great understanding from those experiences how things work out on this campus. We know what time pickup is. We know what time the buses come. So that provides one benefit. And then also keeping a separation of the construction site from the students and staff is also extremely critical. So you'll often drive out and you'll see temporary fence up with windscreen and people might think that that's for advertising or privacy but really that's so we can actually create that physical barrier from the construction activity that's happening in any students and staff and i would like to add it, it gets even more complicated because we have a another contractor uh, grill construction is um, building bassa 2 and that's it, going to open this fall so we have, not only are we working on an active campus, 
we've got two contractors working right beside each other. And, but that collaboration and teamwork still happens there too. And uh, uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a team effort. Lee, what are you looking most forward to about the Performing Arts Center opening? Oh, every single day, it's another example of, I wish we had this auditorium two years ago. So the idea of an indoor professional performance venue for our dance students, our drama students, our chorus and band students, I think that above anything else is something that everyone across the county is excited to see coming. That's great. Thank you all for coming in and speaking with us about the new Performing Arts Center and how it's going to benefit our students. If you've enjoyed this conversation, be sure to subscribe to Beyond the Bell wherever you get our podcast. And check out our website and socials for more information. And remember, the learning journey never stops. It continues beyond the bell.